Hello, this is Overlord Boat, and we're back with another video. So this video is going to be a video on the, well, we all know that the Deadeye was removed. So let's get that over with. So Deadeye was removed in 10.4. That is removed now. And now everyone's like, what now? So today we're going to be talking about the battleship builds that you can do, which is mostly just one. Because at this point, the only main build you can do is the battleship tank build, which we'll be showing shortly, and or the meme builds, which aren't really viable. Let's just get off started. So, SAT score, what do you think of the fact Dead Eye was removed? Dead Eye being removed, I have mixed feelings about it. On one hand, I think people do have legit criticisms on Dead Eye's effect on the meta. But at the same time, you can also argue that the Deadeye didn't actually change much, it just reinforced pre-existing habits. A lot of people tend to stay far back with their battleships at 20 kilometers, and Deadeye only they didn't change it. It only just told them, hey, you should keep doing it because we improve your accuracy. By taking Deadeye away, people are just going to go back to long-range sniping. Just instead of taking Deadeye, they'll take some other skill. What do you think, Bo? Well, in my opinion, for Deadeye, from my time of playing the game so far, and then during the... So, the time during the Deadeye, right? When the Deadeye first came out, the, within the first week of Deadeye, the game was very, very prevalent that the battleship sat very far back. So, within the first week of Deadeye, it was horrible. But after that, it settled and it became pretty much normal. You would still have the few people that sat back, which is pretty normal. And I was like, okay, this is okay. So I stopped complaining at that point. I was like, okay, this is fine. I'm used to it. The first week was the worst. But for some reason, people kept complaining more and more and more. And it turned more into the fact for me that it wasn't the dead eye that was the problem. It's the Thunderer. The Thunderer was the biggest complaint out of people talking about Deadeye. Deadeye was the most effective on the Thunderer on due Thunderer. to the fact it had a 12.3 concealment. So it had the lowest concealment out of the tier 10 battleships. It has the strongest HE out of the tier 10 battleships. It has the highest fire chance out of the tier 10 battleships of a 65%. And it has incredibly good AP and 8 guns. The ship is also maneuverable. 29.5 is okay, but it has a, a decent rudder shift of 10.4. Range has been nerfed to 21.5. Thank God the range has been nerfed. But I still think this ship does need more nerfs as well. Um, you can easily put a range mod on this ship and easily put it back to where it was. But I feel like them taking out Deadeye wasn't a smart move. Because what Deadeye gave to the lesser played ships, or the ones that are less accurate, like the Kerfirst per se, or the Grober, the Tier 9, or maybe lesser accurate battleships, it gave them an ability to be more accurate. Now, for me, I never personally sat outside always of a dead eye build just say hey i gotta sit outside this range all the time i only did i only sniped for a little bit maybe like when i'm moving in position and then i would push in and do my thing and the same thing goes with a colombo i would never on purpose stay outside the dead eye range and snipe i would just move into position snipe while i did and then move in and if i could i would use the dead eye whenever if it was it was able to so I found that Deadeye was very useful for these battleships that were less accurate. And also the fact is, is that most of the testing that was done with the new Italian line was with Deadeye. So the Italian battleships also need to be relooked because the Deadeye also gave the Italians a tentacle buff during that period. And now the Deadeye is gone. The Italians are severely weakened because, hey, they don't have that buff anymore from Deadeye, so their accuracy is now really bad from range, where before they were good. So you may be seeing a buff to the Italian battleships in the future because they removed Deadeye. 
We'll have to wait and see. It all depends upon server performance, so we'll see on that. So let's talk about battleship builds for a second. So let's go to my Yamato, RP Yamato here. The typical battleship build, which is now the meta, is pretty much gun reel feeder. So you can switch your ammo from AP to HE. Uh, in case there's a DD rushing you, you use HE. If there's AP, you would have you'd be able to switch between etc. If you need to switch between the rounds. Of course, you want grease the gears to be able to move your turrets around faster because battleships do have very slow turrets. Adrenaline rush, of course, so when you're lower health, which is going to be inevitable as a battleship, you're going to get farmed. Uh, as you get weaker, you're going to get more ability to fire guns faster. Of course, you need basic survivability to be a tank. Module res restoration timer, which means that if your guns get knocked out, as in they go on a cooldown, but they get repaired, they get up faster, along with the fire extinguisher time and flooding recovery time is faster as well by 15%. The emergency repair, this gives you the extra 10% control damage control party, plus 10% because you a little bit extra heal. It does give you plus one, so you get five heals, and it repair consumable action plus 10%, which means that your DCP lasts for 10% longer. And the number of repair party singles is plus one. This is only, the plus one's only mean for the Russians, since the Russians do have a limited number of DCPs. Now, the must run out is concealment and the fiber engine as well. You all know this. So, the thing is, people are like, what is the new skill? The new skill that was replaced with data is swift in silence. Now, people are like, how can you use this? So, can, it's activated by when your ship is undetected, your speed is increased by 10%. Now, I don't know who thought of this. It ha it's going to get changed for sure. But why would you make a skill that increases your ship speed on detected on the ships with the biggest concealment in the game? 14.1 on the Yamato. 15.6, which goes down to 14. 15.7 goes down to 14.1. Kremlin, which is 14.9 with this specific build. This is like a Kremlin has two, but it's more a Mimi. Kerfers, 15.9, goes down to 14.6. Thunderer, 12.3. It can technically use this. Colombo, its concealment's 15.6, so down to 14. Why would you have a, a skill that relies on the fact you're unspotted? Depend upon that. When you have aircraft carriers, you have DDs, you have cruisers, battleships, you have whatever. The thing is, is that Deadeye was if something is within your concealment that's spotted, it is deactivated. This is if you are spotted at all, you are, you lose the bonus. A battleship 90% of the time, okay, roughly 80% of the time in a match, it's going to be spotted. 80% of the time. So that means you're only getting a utilization of this skill 20% of the time. Except you're in a Thunderer. 12.3 concealment. You're able to go dark in this ship very well. It's going to be able to use this skill tremendously. 12.3 as the smallest. It's easiest to do this. Republic, I think as well. Do you know the, Re the Republic's concealment SAT score? I don't remember on top of my head. Is it like four, 14? About 14. Okay. So pretty much 12.3. The, the Thunder is the best alongside the Conqueror. But the thing is, no. even though you can use this, do you really need to maneuver around the map 10% faster in a battleship? Like, what do, you, what do you think of this, SAT score? Do you think it's really necessary to get... Like, do you think it's a viable build to run Swift in Silence? In a current iteration, I do not think so. So this is the same Swift and Silence that destroyers equip. Yes. In practice, it'll give battleships an extra three to four knots at most. Yep. So Georgia with a 10% speed boost will get roughly about three or four knots. Yep. And that's the problem. You hit the problem on the head. That's the fact that you're spotted so often in battleships means you're not going to get effective use out of it. The other issue is that in order to be relevant, you have to be spotted in a battleship. 
in a destroyer, you can take Swift and Silence because it does not affect your torpedoes. Like, you can torp other ships no problem while remaining in stealth, and that gives you a lot of flexibility in positioning. You can also make a similar argument for cruisers, since you can at least try a torp build even if it's not very effective, and you can reposition often or use smokes in order to stay hidden. But with battleships, there is just no chance. Your smoke firing penalty is way too high, and if you're going to tank, you obviously have to be spotted. So, in practice, that 3 knots of speed isn't even accessible. Like if you're a French battleship, you get a speed boost that gives you about 2 or 3 knots. Yep. How many people even remember to use a speed boost on the French battleships? Some do. I know that I do for the John Bart. But most of the time on the John Bart, I use the engine boost to reverse. It's not even to go forward. It's to reverse. The John Bart is really good at being bow in and be able to push back. Whenever and start spamming HE at Bowen about the battleships and cruisers that are pushing you. It's it's HE is very strong and with its battery reload, it's able to throw an HE shell and if something goes broadside, switch it back to AP and get a good broadside. I love doing that with my John Bart. A lot of people don't expect that from the John Bart, and it really punishes. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like we both nailed this on the head. Swift and silence is not a good skill for battleships it's not useful to majority of the builds maybe like 10 percent of ship battleships can use it somewhat effectively but it's more effective to run the standard tank build the secondaries right now aren't in a very good place where it's a viable build to run and people say, oh, well, you can run this and you can push in. But the problem is, is that you can't effectively push in because how easy it is for the cruisers and other ships to run away from you. So say you get yourself a curve first with the 12 kilometer, 12.6 kilometer secondaries, right? Well, mm -hmm. the secondaries aren't as accurate as it used to be. So you may be going full speed, rushing at the enemy, trying to catch up to them and use your secondaries. And you're just going to get farmed to death. You sacrificed your tank build to do a secondary build. But your ship is so large. And you have such a large concealment. You're not going to effectively be able to do it. It won't work. So the main majority of the ship players that are battleships are like, screw this. I'm going to go play cruiser. So... As a statistical point here, I've been playing every day pretty much for about a few, like pretty much I've been playing every day. I stream every day, I play every day on this game. So pretty much when I saw the a few days before the Deadeye, I saw a jump in the Battleship players. And then after Deadeye was removed, for about three days, the Battleship stayed about the same. But then the Battleship players dropped and the cruiser players started going up. Which means that the battleship players, when Deadeye was moved, they couldn't use their guns. Like, their guns were missing. So they were noticing that when Deadeye was removed, their guns were less accurate. And people were like, oh, well, they're only the people that were sitting really far back. Well, this also goes for me too, because I used to be a battleship main. Most of my battles right now are in battleships, I loved playing secondary battleships. It was the most fun I ever had. My most battles right now should be the Massachusetts, and second should be the Atlanta or the Kerr first, one of those. The fact that I barely touch the battleships anymore, like the Massachusetts or the Kerr first or anything, is a clear indication that a lot of battleship players are turning into cruiser and DD players because battleships are becoming more and more obsolete they're not becoming as good battleships are more as as a fact that there's only a very few that are able to do what they need to do and they have to sit back super far and snipe and a lot of battleships players don't enjoy that they enjoy they enjoy the brawl they enjoy going in rushing the secondaries having like rushing in having a good time with that they don't enjoy sitting back 20 kilometers and sniping with like a, like a fishing pole and just sniping hoping to get a good hit every now and again they enjoy the thrill of rushing in 
having really insane brawls with their battleships. That's what a lot of battleship players enjoy, and they can't get that, so they're going to Cruiser and DDs. So, as of right now, the only true viable build for a tier 10, there's some lower that can do secondary builds, but it's very, very few. And I wouldn't really recommend it anyway, it's more of a meme. Pretty much, is that you have to go with the tank build. And of course, with the tank build, let me just pull it up real quick on a ship that I have. Of course, with the equipment, you would run it like this, where you have the main armament, the damage con, the aiming systems, the damage control modification too. You can switch this one out if you'd like and do propulsion as well to do more juking action if you plan on being long range. Do juking other battleship shots as well. Uh, concealment is always necessary. And usually you'd want either main battery reload or the long range. But since it's the Yamato, um, Deadeye was taken away, so I am going to put back on the ARP main battery director of systems. Since Deadeye is removed now, it's better just to use this for the better d dispersion. I mean, this is for both Yamatos, of course. The ARP Yamato is pretty much a duplicate of the regular Yamato. This is just the whale version, so there's that. Before we end today, is there anything else you think we missed SAT score? I think we covered about everything that has to deal with Deadeye. Now, do you think there's any other skills you think we should talk about today, or do you think we did a good job covering the skills? So, there were other skills mentioned in the dev block, but Deadeye was definitely in the major point, and we covered Deadeye and its full pace and skill, Swift and Silence. I hope in the future, Wargaming will take a look at the skills again and just kind of reevaluate because it's pretty obvious that Swift and Silence is not going to be a popular, uh, oh. not very popular skill. Right. They buffed technically, making it where damage main battery AP shells went from 5% increase to 7.5. And instead of being a 35% increase the fire time and flooding time it's now 25 percent which this is still useless do not fall for this this is not worth it this is a very useless skill and it's very more just trying to grab you and because increasing your fire and flooding time that is a huge pain for your health because dcps already take over about 80 seconds 76 seconds to get like reloaded so that means you're going to be pretty much flooding and fire the whole time if you use that skill so i highly advise not picking that one at all so just going with the regular battleship tank build is pretty much meta at this point for that skill, I have seen a couple people try to run it with uh, certain overmatch ships like Yamato and Shikishima. But other than those ships, I wouldn't recommend it for any other any other battleships unless you like memeing around. Yeah. 7.5% is nice, but generally, if you want to be more impactful, the increased duration of fires and flooding is too much when you need to get aggressive. Yep. And the thing is, for Yamato, it technically could be viable, but the thing is, you pretty much would have to be a sniping ship permanently mm -hmm. pretty much because then because if you get close to any cruisers you are going to get burned alive and this could also go for the vermont as well the vermont could also do this as well uh since the fact is, is that the vermont also has strong guns as well but the thing is is that the yamato just has that overpin factor that the other ships don't have because the Yamato has 460 millimeters and the Vermont has 457s. Yamato overmatch every ship except for ones with 50 millimeter. Yeah, that's kind of. The... the Vermont barely doesn't. By 3 millimeters. That's, that's kind of funny if you think about it. But anyway, I think that's all the time we have today. This did turn kind of a rant kind of video. I do apologize, but we just trying to get the information out there just don't fall for the traps of the other skills currently they are working on new skills and they plan on buffing skills in the future to help them be more viable in the future so i'm definitely looking forward to that uh thank you so much for your time today sat score i always greatly appreciate it man if you guys have any questions or concerns 
definitely put them down in the comments below. I definitely appreciate it. I always do my best to answer them. I'll talk to y'all later and have a wonderful day.